Good morning and welcome to worship today at Grace Lutheran uh, up here in Boone, North Carolina. I'm Pastor Steve and it's a, a special, it's kind of sad day in the life of our congregation. Uh, today is Vicar Randy's last Sunday serving us here up in the mountains. So, uh, so we're going to offer a special blessing for him a little later on in our worship service. But we are just so thankful for our internship year of ministry together. Now, if you're watching our worship service today, kind of earlier in the morning, you're welcome to come over and join us a little after 11 o'clock. Uh, the internship committee will be hosting a reception uh, uh, to celebrate our year of ministry together with Vicar Randy. Also, as I mentioned last week, we'll be collecting a love offering. So if you'd like to, uh, we'll be collecting that through the end of the month, through uh, June 30th. So you're welcome to do that online or mail or send a check in. Either way is fine as we send him with a special gift. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Set, save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with it according to our sin, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love God as God loves us. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you for favor us 
with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. This is a little lesson for the children and all of us, but especially for the small children. This lamp is 140 years old. Initially, it was a um, oil lamp, and it had a nice chimney here. Wick went down the middle of it, and it was used in, in the homes in the late 1800s. It's been in my family that long. This is called milk glass at the top, and it's beautiful as you, wait a minute, something's wrong here. You're supposed to be able to see all of this. This lamp was working in my office, and I went in my office, and I got the lamp, and I made sure it was working, and then I picked it up, and I unplugged it, and, oh, wait, I unplugged it. You see, it's not connected. Wait a minute, I found something I can connect it to. Okay, let's see if we can do this a little bit better. Oh, let's see. <gasps> Look at there! Yes, this is a milk glass lamp, and it's got pictures of, of uh, boats, ships on it, ocean ships, and it depicts actually the trip across the Atlantic Ocean. And I thought you'd like to see it. And you notice it's lit up now. Now what does that have to do with anything? Well, today I'm talking about a single word. It's a noun. Now you know nouns are either a person, a place, or a thing. And this noun is a thing. But it's not a thing that's normally found in the world. The noun is faith. And faith talks about things that are about God and about things that are about the Spirit, things that normally you cannot see. And when we're connected to God, we are the light of the world. And it's that connection that the word faith refers to. Being connected to God. And that's why without faith it's impossible to light up. It's without, totally impossible to please God, it says. But God gives us faith. He gives us faith and strengthens our faith when we listen to his, the stories from the Bible when we listen to the stories about God that our parents tell us, and when we listen to the stories we learn in church. That helps us grow and strengthens our connection to God so that we can always be the light of the world. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him and asked for help. He said, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible anguish. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Instead, just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, I tell you the truth, I have not found such faith in anyone in Israel. I tell you, many will come from the east and from the west to share the banquet with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the sons of the kingdom will be thrown out into outer darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, just as you have believed, it will be done for you. And the servant was healed at that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Gospel for today is rather perplexing. 
in some ways. It's perplexing because it talks about faith and believing. Not the same things. You see, what I'm going to talk about today is a concept that brought me this far. It's why I came into the ministry. It's that one word, that one noun, faith. Now, I stress that it's a noun because I would bet if I would ask you to raise your hands, well, I would bet if I say, can believing be a synonym for faith? And I bet a lot of people would raise their hand. How about trusting? A lot of people would say that's a synonym for faith. Some would say commitment is a synonym for faith. But there's a problem with that because those, for two reasons, there's a promise, problem. One, those are verbs. And faith in the Bible, pistis in Greek, is a noun. And I taught eighth grade English for a couple of years, not that I was real good at it, but I'm pretty sure you can't define nouns with verbs. The two words in Greek are very close because they have the same root. Pistis is the noun, pistuo is the verb. Today we're talking about the noun, and then we'll talk about the verb. You see, because faith is a thing that's spiritual. Faith in the New Testament is always associated with those things that are not of this world. In fact, there are a number of passages in the New Testament that bear that out. Before we get to those, let me ask this question. Does God have faith? Well, according to Mark eleven twenty two, 22, when Jesus turns to his disciples after they discovered the fig tree had died, he says, have the faith of God. Of God could mean it's his, possessive, which in the Greek it is a possessive. So I would say, yes, God has faith. What about Jesus? Did Jesus have faith? Well, it also says in Hebrews 11, without faith it is impossible to please God. And yet we hear at his baptism and at the transfiguration, God saying, the Father saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And we have it written throughout Scripture, that whole construction about the faith of Jesus. It's a possessive Jesus faith. So yes, even though most of the time we shy away from translating that way. And we'll find out why I think that is in just a couple of minutes. But yes, God and Jesus have faith. There's other reasons that we know that. Because you see, for us to have faith, it has to come from somewhere. You see, there's a passage in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 that says not all people have faith. And then we have the, the passage from, um, from Hebrews that I just talked about, that if anyone is going to have faith, they must believe that God exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you are saved through faith. And that is not of your own doing. It is not of works. It is a gift of God. So our, the faith that we have is a gift. And that's repeated in several other places. That we have listened to the gospel and received the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of faith. So you see, when it's talking about faith, it's talking about something that comes from God and is not of this world. It is not something that human beings can crank up and do or invent in ourselves. That's a new thought for many people. And that thought is what brought me to this point. 
You see, my question was, why do we have this so confused? Why do we think when we talk about my faith, I'm talking about how well I can believe, how well I can hold on to these thoughts, even when I'm afraid of something? But that's because what we do, believing, trusting, being sure of something, is produced by that faith God gives us. It's what we can see and experience and deal with. It's in our realm. It's in the natural realm. And so we tend to stay there. So many times Jesus told the disciples, you're thinking as human beings. You're not thinking in the divine way. And yet throughout all of the New Testament, he's trying to teach us about the divine way. And the divine way was to connect to us. How else is God going to take something that is unseen from an unseen spiritual world somewhere and make it physical, make it part of the physical world? We hear in Genesis that he spoke. We hear in Romans 4, Abraham is compared to in his his actions in faith. And he says, like God, he called things that are not as though they were. Abraham was calling Isaac into existence just like God was doing. Because when he was given the promise of Isaac, Isaac existed, just could not be seen. And in today's reading from Hebrews, the epistle a little while ago, we have, for faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. For it is by faith we understand that the worlds were set in order by God's command so that what is visible had its origin in the invisible. You see, faith not only gives us that understanding, but faith is all part of that connection between us and God and part of what it does is it translates or transfers or inverts all the things that are spiritual to become part of our physical existence. So when the word says we've received a lot of things from faith, let's stop and think. The righteousness that is through faith, salvation by faith. You see, those are uh, indirect objects. They're nouns that carry the action. In Ephesians, where it says we are saved by grace through faith, it's saying salvation gets to us through this vehicle, this indirect object, and it's transferred to us by faith. And that's why God creates that receptor faith in us. It also says in Oh, let me, I got it written down here. Just a minute. It also says that things are translated from faith to faith. So it comes from God's faith to our faith. That's how he connects with us. The understanding through all of Hebrews 11, it says this person understood exactly what was expected of him. Abel was expected to sacrifice a lamb because without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. Cain missed out on that. All right. Noah knew to build an ark. Moses knew how to lead the children of Israel. They all received that understanding through that connection they had with God, which was faith. And that connection was formed and sustained by hearing and hearing the word of God. You see, God's word is what builds and creates faith, just like God's word has always created. God's word, it says, Paul says, grace given to me to every one of you to think not more highly of yourselves than you ought to think. In other words, you didn't do any of this. But to think with sober discernment as God has distributed to you a measure of faith. You see, When we get this mixed up between the verbs, our response, how we live, what we can do because God has given us faith, and we replace it 
and we think that that's actually what faith is, we have to back up and think soberly. Do we really think we're as powerful as God? Do we really think that by believing something, I can make it materialize and come out of nothing just because in my mind I believe it? This is a critical understanding. Paul calls it one of the foundations of our relationship with God. God connects to us. Like the children's sermon, when they were connected, then we reveal the light of the gospel. It is that connection that brings the energy from God, that brings his power into our lives and through us. Faith brings us righteousness. It says the righteousness that is of God through faith. It's almost as though God takes his, all of his righteousness and pours it through faith into us. It's like it's a conduit. And that righteousness, like in our world, we have different types of liquid. And we know that seawater is heavier than oil because when a oil rig ruptures, the oil floats to the top. So if you took seawater oil in a container and you filled the container up with seawater, it would displace the oil. Well, God's righteousness is heavier and more viscous than our sin. And when he pours his righteousness into us, it comes through that connection that he's built with us and it displaces our sin. And now when God looks at us, he sees his righteousness. The righteousness of Christ. And when God says you are sanctified and he speaks those words and we receive those words in faith, it becomes who we are. We are created in Christ Jesus. We are a different creation than was before Pentecost. You see, Pentecost marked the time when the Holy Spirit was put back into us. That's what made that connection solid. And that's what changes everything in us. So we are a new creation, created in Christ Jesus. That's, that makes us solid. That makes even our battles with our own flesh immaterial. Because if we walk in the Spirit, we don't fulfill those. And we were created and recreated to walk in the works that were originally intended for humans to do here on earth. We were originally intended to be the link, to be the connection to be between God and us. That's faith. We can't do that. No amount of believing and trusting and Commitment is going to do that on our own. But what God has done is he's created that link between us so that we can watch it happen through us. That's the intent. That's what the noun means. So when you read now things like, oh, I don't know, James 2 that talks about faith without works is dead, instead of reading faith, Think the connection with God, our connection with God. If we have a connection with God, it's going to show up in what we do. That's what James is talking about. Think about faith as our connection with God. Think about faith as the connection through which all of these things flow. Think of faith as the connection that allows us to be recipients and to participate and be a partaker of the nature of God. And now go back and read those passages about faith. Now go back and see what they say to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray for the people of God and his church. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom which comes down from heaven, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edification of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide to the end. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, O God, for all your servants and witnesses of times past, for Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, Deborah and Gideon, Samuel and Hannah for Isaac and the prophets, for Mary, mother of our Lord, for Mary Magdalene, Peter, Paul, and for all the apostles, for Stephen and Phoebe, for all the martyrs and saints in every time and in every land. In your mercy, give us, as you gave to them, the hope of salvation and the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we humbly thank you for your goodness to us and to all that you have made. We pray you for your creation, for keeping us and all things in your care, for all the blessings of life. Above all, we bless you for your immeasurable love and in redeeming the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with thankful hearts we praise you, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving ourselves into your service and by living in your gifts of holiness and righteousness all of our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious Father, keep watch with those who work or watch or weep and give your angels charge over all those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, and shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These petitions and all that you would have us ask, we send before you onto your throne, in the name of our Lord Jesus, amen. Gathered together with the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord grant you mercy and look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.
Go in peace, share God's love. Thanks be to God.
Go in peace. Share God's love. Thanks be to God. All right, now for the liturgy.